The Property Pod. 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 Welcome to The Property Pod with MoneyWeb. The property sector is an ever-changing sector. And in this podcast series, your host, Suren Naidu, chats to movers and shakers in the property industry. Hello and welcome to The Property Pod, South Africa's premier property investor podcast. My name is Suren Naidu and on this weekly podcast show, we gain insider insights from leading executives analysts, developers, and entrepreneurs in South Africa's expansive property industry. Delta Property Fund, the JSE-listed real estate investment trust, which is largely invested in the office property market, brought out its interim results last week. The fund has been struggling in recent years, not just from the COVID hit, but leadership challenges and a huge debt pile. New management came in a few years ago amidst COVID-19, The group's latest results, while not great reading as there are no dividends for shareholders, did show some slight improvements in some areas. In its heydays, Delta had a multi-billion rand market cap, but today it's regarded as a small cap with a market cap of around 170 million. The person who has been tasked with turning around the ship is Bongi Masinga, who was appointed permanent CEO this October. However, she's no stranger to the group. She acted as interim CEO for almost a year and a half back in 2020. Bongi, a very warm welcome to the Property Pod. Thank you very much, Suren. It certainly has been a tumultuous few years for Delta Property Fund. Where do things stand currently in the turnaround? You know, I think your opening remarks were very much on point. We have been plagued with a lot. And for us, I suppose there is a positive and a negative being so much sovereign underpinned is that during COVID, sovereign actually paid, you know? And, but I suppose at this, at the same time is that their renewal of leases, et cetera, does take rather a long, long time than you would expect uh, usually. These results, they may not be that fantastic, but they definitely show a bit of stability in terms of where we're going. So in the same time, trying to deal with some of legacy issues and part of those legacy issues, you know, I'm talking about particularly spend in our properties where we really reneged in terms of TIs, which we've spoken about openly, which could easily cost us um, tenancy. We have worked very hard to get that right. Everybody understands the message internally in terms of our response time and ensure that the user have that user experience. So, you know, we are going to a place, for example, our weighted average lease expiry has now increased to 15.8 months. We're not comfortable with that number, but it's a number that we can work with, you know, going forward. And even collections, we did collect an amount of uh, 20 million for this reporting period. But post that, we collected another 37 million, predominantly from uh, the NPA and Eteguini uh, municipality. So, you know, we are honing in on business. And for us, when we look at this portfolio, it's all about tenancy. It's about making sure that you spend in terms of capex. It's make sure that you continue with your repair and maintenance. It's to ensure that we manage area debtors so they don't run away ahead from us. And it's to ensure as well that we keep our costs exactly where they should be. So our portfolio has got very high vacancies. But having said that as well, as you correctly stated, is that our debt is rather very, very high. Hence, our strategy in terms of disposals. You know, we are trying to dispose in a very, very difficult market. But having said that, if you look at what we have disposed uh, up till now, we have uh, disposed um, in terms of what the valuation of each property is, and even some of them we're able to achieve a premium. We think our portfolio is quite fairly valued. So therefore, we should be able to, you know, get a few going. I think for us, where the challenge is, is try to get that bulk sale, you know, through. But we do find that having, you know, a bite size here, a bite size there works. But part of those bite sizes, why, you know, they seem to work is because it's that alternate uh, buyer. It's not the guy who wants to compete with you and get into government. 
and hence they're willing to buy some of the vacant properties and because they're looking at conversion. In terms of total debt, can you share what your total debt is? I see the loan-to-value ratio is also still high at 60%, but it's lower than before, about 2% lower. Maybe you want to share a little bit of the value of the disposals. Have they contributed to that lower LTV number? Part of it they have, but a big part of it is our amorts. You know, we have, despite our cash challenges, And when I say cash challenges, I mean the fact that we can't distribute to our shareholders, but we collect very well. And the bulk of it has gone to interest bearing payments and amorts. That's what largely has contributed to that. So when you look at our disposals in terms you ask, have our disposal contributed? Yes, they have, but not in the quantum uh, that we would like to see. For us, we're looking at our current debt exposure. Uh, that you've asked is about four billion, and uh, we are looking to really halve that, and as a result of disposals. So the total value of your property portfolio currently, because your market cap doesn't give an indication of that. Clearly, a lot of rits are trading at massive discounts at the moment. Yes. So the total value of our portfolio is six point nine billion, and uh, the total interest bearing debt is four billion. Delta largely plays in the office property sector, which is struggling at the moment. What is the group's overall vacancy levels and which are some of the worst and best performing areas for the fund? So for us as a fund, so our vacancy level is about 34%, 34.5%. And where we are performing well is still office, but it's regions. So when we talk about performance and not, for example, Cape Town, we have zero vacancy. That portfolio is fully let. We look at Durban, though we do still have high vacancy, but we see traction on each and every month. For example, the Marine, we've now just let the 15th floor, and yet another floor to the premier of um, Eteguini. And um, because the courts are reopening again in the CBD, we have a lot of the advocates who had left uh, the CBD getting back, and they're still being tenanted at uh, the Marine, the Marine building. For us, Joburg is a terrible portfolio, to Joburg CBD, and um, that goes without saying. And and I've got to say, uh, Bloemfontein is a horrible portfolio, but also as part of that, we're very excited that we've sold a building in, in, in Bloemfontein. But not only, we are now in the next three to six months, we'll transfer three buildings in Bloemfontein. Now, these buildings have been vacant from the day they were bought. So for us, it's quite a milestone. Hence, you know, we say, yes, we're looking for a portfolio sale, which will help us get to where we want to get to quickly. But we're also realistic for us to achieve the values that we want to achieve. uh, Because, I mean, at the end of the day, this is shareholder capital. You know, it is also very prudent to dispose in the manner that we're disposing. So for us, ultimately, it is to get out of uh, Bloemfontein and particularly Kimberley. With regards to Johannesburg, are you looking to exit Johannesburg as well, or do you have a very big portfolio there? We don't have such a big portfolio there, but we do have buildings that are struggling. For example, we have a building called Chambers of Change. The retail there is superb and gets in the income. And I think sometimes that's why Maybe the team gets lazy in terms of that office leasing because the retail, it's really your top brands in terms of retail. But at the same time, even if we did try to get office in there, there's no parking. So, you know, some of it, it's those challenges in CBD uh, that we are faced with. You mentioned Durban. You do have a big portfolio in Durban. Uh, Landmark buildings in the CBD, the old Sunlam building, Southern Life They obviously have changed their name since Old Mutual Towers has changed its name to Delta Towers. And I remember when I was a reporter at the Mercury, just over 10 years ago, Old Mutual spent about $100 on revamping that building. You talked about some aspects of Durban, but I understand the vacancies in the Durban CBD in general is, is, is double digits. And that's quite concerning because there seems to be still a move to the north. So, I mean, we're fortunate about the fact that we tenant Eteguini municipality. Now, Eteguini can move to the north. 
a lot of it is human settlements. A lot of it, you get the embassies sitting there and um, you have the, 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 the call center that does raids and taxes. And sometimes they do need to receive walk-ins. So they're not going to relocate. And for us, now you mentioned buildings whose names I don't know, but for us, Eteguini is tenanted at Delta Towers, as you've mentioned. They are tenanted part of them at Embassy Towers. They are tenanted at, um, in fact, they are sole tenant at Shell House. So we are quite very exposed with Eteguini Municipality. And our Delta Towers still has the American consulate in there. They are a fantastic tenant to have as well. Okay, that's good to hear because that's uh, one of the tallest buildings in the Durban CBD. In fact, just uh, across the road from a building that's being revamped by a company that I did an interview with recently, 320 West Street, uh, I think it's changed its name, but uh, there's quite a bit of investment going into that building on student accommodation. Bongi, you did highlight the fact that you are a sovereign underpinned. In simple terms, a lot of your clients are government and uh, municipal on various levels. You mentioned some of the challenges, but I would like you to maybe give us an update on where things stand, because this has been an ongoing issue for a number of the funds that target government, where you know government is becoming very sticky about length of leases. Obviously, you don't have to deal with the empowerment side of things because Delta is empowered. But how challenging is that environment at the moment? Are you making headway in your talks with government for them to extend their leases and, you know, uh, pay on time? So they pay on time for as long as you remind them to pay on time. So hence, we collect every cent that we bill on a monthly basis and even over starting to collect the areas. So they pay, you know, and that's how I think as a company, we also survived through COVID because they paid. They didn't come to us uh, for relief. So, but I mean, the challenges that we have with the renewal of leases, they're still there. We are seeing three years. We are seeing five years. The 9-11s are going to be hard to get. I accept that because they feel we're not as black as we should be. You know, listed on the stock exchange, they feel your shareholding can change overnight, you know, and arguably so maybe, you know, because the shares trade. However, having said that, we are very, very active in the tender space where, you know, every tender that comes out, that's still government, we go for it. And some of those tenders do give us a 9-11, 9 years, 11 months. So, for example, a building that had lied quite vacant in Kimberley, We had the IEC move in 1st of November, and they signed a seven-year lease. So it will come. But what it does mean is that we must be very proactive and very active where, you know, in spaces that still give us a bit of an opportunity. And, you know, it's very difficult. For example, it's a known fact that they are building some of their own centers, you know, their own buildings, where, for example, Telcom Towers has been there for a while to move the police a lot of the police are still tenanted in our buildings. So, you know, we're seeing the future of where, it, where it's going to be. And we are in a lot of, what we, in, in the way we do our business, trying as well to exit uh, in some of those properties now while they're still let, uh, you know, before whatever move comes. But if you look at the police, they've been relocating for four years now. They could have given us a four-year lease instead of renewing every 12, you know, for 12 months, every 12 months. You know, so we are watching the space, but by all means, it's not an easy space to be in. Bongi, I have to ask this question, but uh, where are things standing? Do you have an update with us for us in terms of the investigation against uh, former execs that were implicated in wrongdoings at Delta Property Fund? So to us, we don't spend the day and the night uh, worrying about that. When we hand it over to a legal house to deal with it, we've left it in their hands. So it is still true. We have not withdrawn anything. We reported to the authorities that we should have reported to. And, you know, for us, for all intents and purposes, things are still ongoing. Okay, thanks for that. Bongi, I know you have had experience running the fund previously, but officially you became permanent CEO in October. What's your immediate challenge or or your immediate task that you would like to achieve over the the short term, over the next year or so? And where do you see Delta Property Fund in, say, five years' time? 
to still be the preeminent property company in listed on the stock exchange, or maybe not even, but listed on the stock exchange for now. But for me, the immediate challenge is to really, I think now we've built a good base. It's to make sure that then that trajectory actually begins in terms of, you know, how are we maintaining our properties? And that speaks to facilities, how uh, we manage the costs. And that speaks to our capex. Are we doing what we're supposed to do at the time that we're supposed to do it? Are we reactive or are we proactive in how we treat our um, tenants? But also what we are looking for as well is reliability and trust. If there is a TI, if we've renewed a lease and there's a TI, we've got to execute on it. And those were some of the problems that the fund, you know, was plagued with um, previously. And, you know, what underpins this fund is our collections. We work hard on making sure that every cent then comes in. And, you know, what we're looking for is a much longer tenure in terms of our funding. You know, with our, with our funders, we meet regularly. We try and we encourage them to speak openly. We know that, you know, with reposes having happened, we become top of mind, I suppose, for everybody, because for all intents and purposes, we were similar, even though not that similar. So, you know, it's just to make sure that this fund actually does turn around. We are also under a lot of pressure in terms of, you know, turning this fund around and under a lot of pressure, I suppose, from the board. That's how then I accepted, because to get someone to start from scratch in terms of strategy, understanding the strategy was also maybe going to put brakes to a certain extent. I'm going to put you on the spot here. I talked about five years, but uh, considering you have to pay down your debt over the next few years, when can we expect uh, dividends to be paid from Delta's side? Is that a long way off? Well, we hope not, because I think part of it is, and I mean, we talk about this every time there's a board meeting. When is it going to be? We're also looking at clever ways on how we can skin this cat. But a lot of it really revolves and rotates around our funders. They will not let us take what they think is due to them and give it to shareholders. So there's, those negotiations are ongoing, but also we're not, uh, we are very much alive to the fact that we had set a date, a date that I'm afraid to repeat right now, but you know, in terms of when we re- will return to that. So for as long as we keep the pace and the acceleration on our disposals and we find a good lending, uh, so, for example, that weighted average lease uh, expiry, if it can move from just 60 to 50, I think we can have better conversations uh, with the bank because the bulk, I mean, the company does generate a lot of cash, but the bulk of it goes to if we can pay almost half a billion to, uh, to banks per year, that's a lot of money. Well, I, I suppose you'd have to want the overall office property sector to improve as well, even though you've got a lot of government tenants just considering your vacancy rates and that sort of thing. But uh, Bongi, thanks so much for your time. That was Bongi Masinga, the new permanent CEO of Delta Property Fund. Thanks for listening to the MoneyWeb Property Pod with Suren Naidu. To listen to more episodes, go to moneyweb.co.za or the MoneyWeb app and follow MoneyWeb News for daily updates. Follow Suren on Twitter at Suren Naidu for more of his property industry content and other business stories. The Property Pod. Pod.